Good afternoon to my fellow engineers. This is the uh, third video in the advanced pack for the Solid Edge ST7. And in this video, we're just going to have a very quick look at simulations. So in the previous video, uh, in the advanced pack, we had a very quick look at motions and animations. So we uh, we kind of we took a, a, a dynamic part or a dynamic assembly and said, right, we're going to look at how this behaves with respect to time. So as uh, we move one component, how does it influence the other components? And this was done with the uh, very simple sort of engine crankshaft um, single piston design. And obviously you can build those up to make it a lot more complex um, and design entire engines or, or anything that you can imagine. Um, and in this video, as I said, we're just going to have a very quick look at uh, simulating um, other scenarios. So if you think of it like this, in the last video we simulated motion. In this video, we're going to simulate uh, temperature and we're going to simulate forces. So if you were to imagine um, uh, like, a, like a pencil and you put a force and you hold it at one end and you put a large force at the other end, the pencil might start to bend slightly. But obviously because it's made of wood, if you push too hard, it will eventually fracture. Um, similarly, if you had uh, like a plastic ruler and you held one end at 20 degrees and you started heating up the other end, quite a lot it would it might start to bend but eventually obviously it would start to get so hot that it would actually melt and we're not going to be uh, looking at melting anything or um, uh, fracturing anything but we're going to have a quick look at um, some of the simple simulations that you can do in solid edge and the way that it achieves these uh, just for a little bit of background the way that it achieves these um, uh, sort of simulation results is Obviously, it can't go away and actually heat up an object. It's a, it's a computational environment. So it does something called finite element analysis. Um, and it basically splits up your large system, your uh, your rod or your pencil, into loads of little sections, uh, loads of little elements. And then it analyzes each el uh, element, how it behaves with the rest based on the boundary conditions. Um, so the first thing we obviously need to do is we need to set up um, something that we're going to analyze uh, and the way we're going to do that is obviously we're going to start in the uh, in the part environment so we're going to make our first part and we're all we're going to be considering this all for one part so we're just going to make a very simple part uh, we're going to just make a, um, a rectangular beam uh, for this example so we just go into the extrude command we've done this before many times uh, I'm going to make a 200 by 200 beam it's a good angle and make it a meter long. Uh, and we could obviously do it like that, but that's obviously um, in the real world you wouldn't use like a big beam of this in steel. You'd probably have it as a, as a thin wall instead. You'd have it as a section. So we're just going to go with the thin wall command, make it a, a common thickness of 20 millimeters. Um, and a lot on the inside and set the faces and obviously we've got to do that face but we've also got to do the opposite face because otherwise it'll just stop 20 millimeters from the end and there we go that's a nice simple beam that we can model there so you might think that we're ready to start our simulation what we're going to do to it but obviously the first thing we really need to do is say what's our material what what's this thing made out of because obviously wood will behave very differently to metal which will behave very differently to plastic which will behave very differently to something like water and you can actually um, say in solid edge I want this to be made of water um, but obviously that will give us uh, silly results you wouldn't use a beam made of water so we're going to say that we're going to make this of structural steel um, so we're going to go to our properties we're going to go to our material table um, and we're going to just use a structural steel it's a good uh, good approximation for what we're going to be using it for so there we go there we've assigned what our material is, is, is made out of um, there. So now we need to decide what sort of simulation we're going to do. So we're going to go along this top tab, we're going to go from home all the way to simulation. Um, as you can see, if, you, if you've noticed there, that defines our material. Our material is obviously structural steel. You can obviously change what it is um, in this environment as well, but it's just, it just nice to show you where the, this doesn't include all of the things, uh, all of the things that we've used. And uh, obviously all of these should be grey because we haven't actually said what we're doing. And so to, to, to start that, we've got to open up a new study. So you go to the new study command. 
and this will allow you to um, decide what sort of thing you're going to be looking at. Um, so obviously you could say, well, I just want to consider forces or I just want to consider temperature. I want to consider forces and temperature. And today we're just going to consider forces by themselves and then we're going to consider temperature by themselves. Um, if you start to add them together, obviously things become more com com uh, complicated. So that's done by the study type. There's, there's linear static and there's, there's various other ones. We're going to be using linear static and steady state heat transfer. And those are two very common, very simple ones to use. In terms of the mesh type, and I'll go on to what meshing is later on. Um, we just want to go to tet uh, tetrahedral mesh um, simply because it's the it's the default and it's it's quite easy to visualize as well. So we go to OK. And now all of these buttons have been um, activated. Now notice obviously because it's a uh, static study, uh, basically we you know we, we're not considering any heat. The thermal loads section here, you can't apply any thermal loads because we're not considering heat. We're only considering uh, forces um, and moments and such of the like. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to say I want this end to be fixed. This end is is plugged into a wall, perhaps, or something, or you know it's 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 held up in some way, and we've got a really heavy man or or a car or something like that sat on this end, and we want to see what happens when we apply a heavy load to this end. How much does it bend? So we need to first of all define which end or whereabouts we want it to be fixed by. And uh, that's a type of constraint. Um, so if we go up to the constraint section here and we apply, you can either pin one section or we can fix um, completely one area. Um, you can see it's, it's six degrees of freedom. That means that there's a, that, that means that there's a, it can't move in any of the three Cartesian directions, X, Y, Z. Um, and it can't rotate in any of the three planes either. You, you, obviously you can rotate around each axis as well. Um, we want it to set to a face because we want this entire face here, this entire rear face, to be completely constrained. So we'll select that face. And that little blue dot has appeared saying yeah, that's constrained. Just press enter. And now that block blue dot has been saying it's a fixed point. It's completely fixed. That's this entire face. Don't be put off by the dot is um, obviously at one point on the face. It's, it, is a, it is the whole face that's completely fixed. So we've got the edge that's plugged into you know our, our wall. Um, and that's not going to move. No matter what we do, um, that face in particular is not going to move. If obviously we were to apply a really, really heavy force, you know, like a millimeter away from that face, um, the entire structure would behave, you know, would move a lot. But that face, that infinitesimally thin face, will not move. Okay, and now we're going to apply a force uh, to this end. So we're going to go to forces. Um, we could apply a force to this face, but that would imply that we're fa applying a force uh, in the in the y direction, actually, you know, uh, normal to the face, going into the face or out of the face. Um, and we could apply a force to this face at the top, um, but that would imply that the force is being applied evenly to this entire face here. So what we want to do is we want to change from uh, from face to edge corner, and we're going to apply our force to this edge here. Okay. And at the minute it's set to up. We don't want it going up. We want it going down. Obviously the, the man or the car or the, 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 the roof or something is, is pushing down into it. So we're going to apply it downwards. And that's it's done in millinewtons. Obviously one thousand one, 1, millinewtons is, is one newton. And for the size of our system that's tiny, we're actually going to change that to um, 100 newtons. Like so. So obviously that's now changed to 100,000 millinewtons. So we'll just go ahead and run this. Obviously, you might have noticed that we haven't included gravity. We'll include gravity in just a, just a sec. But um, we'll just go ahead and run this. Now, as I said at the at the beginning, the way that Solid Edge works out what's going on is obviously it can't analyze the entire system. It's got to analyze it in little blocks, in little elements. And the reason it's called finite element analysis is because obviously um, each element is, 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 is quite small, but it's a... Uh, um, it's a defined amount, so it's it's finite. It's not an, obviously an infinite uh, element. Um, so we need to define what the elements are, and the way you do that is you create the mesh. And you may remember obviously that what, that when we had that text box open, we defined it as mesh as opposed to surface or body size. So if we go up to up to mesh here, you've got to do mesh before you solve. If I try to press solve, it will just use the default value for the mesh, and you won't get the uh, 
the best results. I mean, you get a pretty good, pretty good representation of what's going on, but it's uh, it's obviously not the best results. Um, it's not. It, it won't be the most accurate results. So if we just close that and we'll just redefine our mesh, just so you guys can see what the mesh actually does. So when you've got this mess, I'll just put this over here. Um, you can define how large a mesh you want. So the coarser you make your mesh, the coarser it is, the larger the segments are. And therefore, the less accurate the uh, solution will be. However, obviously, because there is less things to, com to, to computate, the computer will have a lot, a much easier time trying to work out what's going on. It might not necessarily be correct. But it makes it, you know, it's like, it's like rounding up. It's it's rounding up a lot more, so it makes it a lot easier for the calculations. But they're not necessarily correct. Um, if you make it a really fine mesh, as you can see, I mean, it takes quite a bit longer, but your computation will be a lot more accurate. So obviously now we've got a really tiny mesh. It's really really fine. But obviously if we were to go and solve this, it would actually take quite a bit longer. Um, and obviously this is a simple beam. If you had a huge structure, if you designed an entire house. And you want to make sure that the roof weighs the right amount. Um, obviously, it'll be a lot more difficult for your computer to work out what's going on. So we're going to choose a, a mesh size of about six or seven. You, you're stuck to these um, finite meshes, but but there are ways of getting around that. But we won't cover that today. So we'll go ahead and press mesh and solve. And then we're going to achieve some results here. Now, by default, the first thing it shows you in the in the linear system in this. The linear load system is um, uh, the stress experienced, and it's expressed. Everything is expressed by these contours, uh, these these color changes uh, expressed by this color chart here. So you can see that the majority of it is actually not under that much stress. It's, it's under you know, 0 0.074 ish uh, megapascals of, of stress, um, but there are obviously some key points like right on the edge. There's quite a lot of uh, stress. At these corners where it's constraints, there's obviously quite a lot of stress. And obviously you can use your imagination to work out why that is. Um, corners tend to have a lot of stress. If we were to round these off, there there might not be so much stress there as well. Or if we were to support struts or anything. Um, and you, you, you can do loads of cool things. You can view loads of things. The only things I'm going to show you are stress. And if we just go to the data selection, we can change this to displacement, which is the distance it's moved. So if I were to show you from, from the right... This obviously implies, based on not looking at the, the amount, you know, it's a meter long. It looks like it's almost gone down about 60 millimeters or something like that. Um, obviously, that isn't the case. It hasn't gone down 60 millimeters. It's just a graphical rep representation. If you were to look at, uh, you know, this, this, this orange line just here, um, that actually only represents about, uh, I don't know if you can see that, about 0 0.002 ish, uh, 24 uh, millimeters. So, really not that much. Um, so our beam is actually, it's not really under any, any real stress or any load. Um, so we're absolutely fine there. If we close that, the, the last thing I'll just do on this, uh, on this, um, on this system here without doing the, the heat transfer. Um, obviously we said that it wasn't hugely accurate because obviously we've got this light load, this 100 Newton load, which remember is only about 11 kilograms, which for the, for the, for the system is really not that much, but we haven't included the weight of the system. And the way that we, because obviously at the minute it's like saying it's in uh, a vacuum up in space, really far away from everything, and we've just got this load and this fixed point. If we want to include the weight of the system, and actually I'll just, I'll just show you that this this obviously system is about 113 kilograms, and and we've got an experience of about nine kilograms over here. So sorry about 11 kilograms over here. Um, so obviously if we include the gravity, which we can do by doing body loads. And changing the the gravity, we can obviously if the 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 value is um is uh, nine point eight one uh, meters per second squared, which is right. That's that's for Earth. If we're doing this on Neptune or something, obviously it'd be quite a bit different. And we won't change the mesh size. We'll just we'll just go onto the onto the solve. And I'll just change this to the displacement because I remember that value. It's gone from zero point zero zero two four four. It's, it's almost five times larger, which makes sense because obviously we've included this much larger load uh, under the weight of the system, which acts at the center. And now the displacement is a lot more evenly distributed. Um, 
as you can see originally with the displacement the, this these sections were quite quite um quite dark uh, and there was a lot more displacement towards this end but now it's relatively uniform in, in terms of this this change uh, and if we go to the stress again these sections were really really dark these sections weren't so much but obviously the stress is now at these corners because obviously similarly a lot of uh, a lot of uh, load and moment is being applied to this region so I'll close this simulation so that was a very very quick look at uh, forces and you can you can apply torques you can have all, all, all sorts of shapes you can fix it in different orientations obviously if you fix it at this edge and have a, an edge that way it would look very different um, I'll let you experience that yourself um, I'm going to open up a new study now and I don't want to be linear static I want to be steady heat uh, transfer uh, tetrahedral still and this is going to allow me to look at um, just just temperature flow so um, ignoring all the forces ignoring gravity and stuff like that what would happen if I were to heat this end up say say this is right beside a boiler or something but this uh, this end is, is is just into a normal room um, and th the way we're going to do that is we're going to apply a temperature to this face and we're going to apply a temperature to this face and we're going to watch what happens as, as time goes on um, how does the how does the heat uh, flow through it um, and the, the, the way that we set that is we go to the thermal loads here and uh, the one we look at is temperature obviously we can do all sorts of things but we're gonna we're gonna look at the temperature we want it to be a face and we're gonna set this end now the other end we're gonna set to about 20 degrees centigrade which is which is room temperature but we're just saying what if we set this end to a really hot end you know this is hotter than a boiler we'll, we'll say this is the outside of a boiler um, and the outside of the boiler is 120 degrees um, so that the water inside eventually reaches 100 degrees for example so we've set this end to 120 degrees and we're going to set this end to 20 degrees so it's on its default for 20 okay and obviously, as you can see, there's no displacement, there's no stress or anything like that because we haven't considered any forces. If you were to do a, um, a steady heat transfer with linear static um, uh, forces, you would see um, some stress change. But at the minute, the only thing that you can view is temperature in the data selection. Um, and it makes, a, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you look at this end, it's very dark red, it's 120 degrees. And if you look at this end, it's 20 degrees, which makes a lot of sense. The last real thick, uh, quick thing that I'm going to show you right now is um, obviously this is what happens uh, at the steady state end basically what happens um, if we just let this run forever um, and it's settled to what it's forever going to look like with this end being constantly applied to 20 degrees and this end to be constantly applied to uh, 120 degrees but obviously what happens if um, this this entire system was at 20 degrees and then we shove it up against this boiler so that this end becomes 120 degrees or starts to become 120 degrees what happens with time well, you know, how does it get to the state? Because this is just the final state. And quite similarly to the uh, motion that we looked at in the previous video, um, you can you can tell Solid Edge that I want to look at it as time goes goes on. And the way that you do that is you just uh, you click on the animate button, and it will automatically generate a really good representation for you. So as you can see, I'll wait for it to get back to the beginning, and I'll just so it starts off. Uh, just just obviously before now it started off at 20 degrees um, as we go through this end is starting to get hotter and the, the temperature is flowing through it's now about 45 degrees until you know this end is starting to hit about 87 degrees I'd say about so it's 78 degrees um, um, this end is obviously still hold at 20 degrees this is like our fixed temperature end um, and obviously this end it's not being applied 120 degrees straight away because that's not quite how it works you just um it's you know it's it's slowly building its way up to 120 until we reach the uh the point where it's it's it is 120 degrees this end is still uh 20 degrees and you can see that the um the temperature has has leaked through almost it's it's flown through in this way um, and you can change all sorts of parameters you can say i want the the uh, the thing to be in more detail um or i want the cycle length to be longer which basically means that this entire cycle, um, which will which will last um, the same amount of time um, in terms of uh, what Solid Edge thinks it lasts, 
um, you know, it won't go forwards and backwards or anything. If you say I want this to last 20 seconds, it will just run at uh, two and a half times the speed, um, which is obviously quite useful if you want to uh, view it in real time. You say, okay, it actually experiences, actually takes about an hour to heat up to that temperature. So that was just a very, very quick overview of some of the um, uh, temperature and uh, force uh, simulations that you can do to solid edge. And obviously it's on a very simple beam. If you use the engine that we used earlier on, you could put in a... Um, uh, um, a cylinder where uh, the explosion occurs, and see does all of the do all of the components actually hold um, when you know when when that explosion reaches the uh, excessive temperatures that are required to run the uh, combustion engine, and um, you know will it hold or will it hold with all the forces that, uh, applied? Will all those really thin struts that we had would that apply? And you can do this for the smallest of things, and you can do this for the biggest of things. Um, but obviously, just remember that the the finer you make your mesh the longer it takes to solve, um, as opposed to the coarser. Um, and also, obviously, the, the larger you make your design, uh, the thing that you're testing, the the more complex it becomes as well. Um, anyway, so, so that wraps it up, and I, I hope to see you guys in the next video.